And welcome to the Metal Voice again, once on the show, once again, uh, the one and only Mr. Adrian Vandenberg, who is currently on tour through the United States. What's going on, Adrian? Hey, man, how you doing? You guys, it's both you guys doing, is that what I need to know? Yeah. Well, we had so much fun the last time we had you on talking about the last album, and we thought we'd do it again. So now, even more news, good news, you're touring, uh, touring North America. Yeah, it's 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 such a great thing, you know. Um, as people, uh, as you know, as you you guys know, um, it's been more than thirty years ago that I toured the states for the last time. Uh, well, for the the mo- <laughs> let's see, the last time I toured the states was in the nineteen nineteen ninety with um, White Snake for a Slip of the Tongue tour. So for me, it is an interesting um, interesting emotion because the uh, United States has been my home away from home for su- such a long time. And I've toured everywhere, you know. And every, you know, whenever we're on the on the highways, I see uh, cities fly by where I've played, and it's that, that's how it, how it is in Holland too, you know. I've, I've I've been doing shows in Holland ever since I was fifteen or something. So wherever I drive, there's always a village or a town or a city where I've played a number of times over the years. But Holland is about this big, and the yeah, states yeah. is a different story. So. Um, it's just really great, you know. I, I really love touring the States. I love touring anywhere, you know, but the States, of course, logically, because I've done so much work over here. Well, I, I made the mistake of calling it work because it doesn't feel like work, even though yeah. people say it is. But um, <laughs> I'm really, really happy to be here and to, you know, to see all the smiling faces in the, in the halls again whenever, you know, you, you play the stuff that you love playing. So. What what do you miss about the st- states? That, what 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 does the United States have on tour that you don't have in Holland and Europe? I mean, In and Out Burgers. I don't know. Yeah. What, 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 what do you have? What do you have there? Well, I, I I love life on the road because you're in a kind of a bubble, you know, that goes for any tour anywhere. But um, in the states, it's just more extensive. But what I've always loved about playing the states ever since the first time uh, with the original Vandenberg lineup in 1983 is um, the position that uh, show business, in this case rock music, has in society. You know, people are um, really excited about it and and they take it, uh, they respect it, which is great because in Holland still, after all those years, sometimes I run into people that go, so what is your real work? (laughs) No, it's still, that's that's the way it is. You know, America is a show business country number one worldwide, everybody knows, you know, so... Uh, for you guys, it's it's normal because you live here and and you, you you've grown up in the, in that uh, in that vibe. But for me, you know, whenever I play here, it is a different kind of excitement. Even though the crowd that you play for now, of course, is uh, is a lot more mature because they've been grow uh, they grew with us uh, with this kind of music. And uh, for people, it's a time machine, and for me too, because we play a lot of White Snake stuff. Um, that I was involved with in, in for such a long time, you know, 12, 13 years. And it's great to play that again for the people that that, that, that made it that big and everybody's got a big smile on their face and they sing along and everything, you know, so it's a play machine. It's really wonderful. So are you just doing the White State songs from Slip of the Tongue or, uh, or are there no. other songs? No, it's, it's uh, all, all the big stuff uh, that I was involved with, Slip of the Tongue, um, 1987 uh, album we play crying in the rain uh, still the night uh, here we go again this is love you know all the all the good stuff because i've played those songs for such a long time and uh, a bunch of them i was involved in the writing uh, together with david so it's yeah it's a special kind of um gig you know you i'm <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> you, you step into the time machine <laughs> people join you in the time machine and you you just fly through the the set and it's over be- before you know it. You know, it's just wonderful. And what about the Va- Vandenberg catalog? That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to just say. Go yeah, on. same thing. You know, uh, s- songs like uh, "Your Love and uh, Your Love Is in Vain," um, uh, of course, "Burning Heart," um, "Wait Till the sh- Shit Is the Pan." I'm uh, I'm Dutch. I'm not. I- I'm aware of the, of the fact that um, you know, and you can say anything you want on radio. So <laughs> you don't know anything about that that you're not supposed <laughs> to do in the states. But everybody uses those words anyway. You know, so. I never understood what the big deal was, you know. But um, when I um, started doing interviews on the first um, Vandenberg tour in '83, supporting Ozzy Osbourne, um, 
uh, and I did my live radio uh, interviews. Um, and I mentioned what I tell a shit is a fan. Ooh, people go, ooh, ooh. oh my god, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a normal word. Everybody uses it. You know, it's not like a blasphemy or something. It's just yeah, that's the way it is. So it was, uh, at the were time, you, were, were you on the tour when Ozzy bit off the head off the bat? No, unfortunately not. No, or mm. or shoot us well, maybe fortunately. Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean, Ozzy's such a great guy, and he was so incredibly generous to us. We had sound checks; we could use the old PA, all the lights. Ozzy, you know, he's like the sweetest guy, and he's the funniest guy. He's, it was one of the best memories I have of the early Vandenberg tour was um, touring with Ozzy. When you when you did a when you did your second album. And you did like songs like Friday Night, uh, Welcome to the Club. Like I love those songs actually. To me, they're, 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 they're just the happiest, you know, uh, go out and party kind of songs, right? Yeah. Was it? Was it? Would you guys specifically say, you know, we're going to write something for the radio? This is going to be on the radio, or did it just come no. naturally? No, you know, when I write, I wrote the music and the lyrics and all the vocal melodies and stuff for all those songs. Uh, it comes out of me naturally, you know. I'm. Um, I'm um, a diehard optimist, positive <laughs> guy, you know. I'm never in a bad mood, and I'm really lucky, you know, because I got it from my parents. There was never a problem in the house, and up until I was about six or seven, I thought it w was the same for everybody else too, but it's not, as we know, you know. Uh, so it made me feel even more privileged that um, mm -hmm. you, you have the, the fortune to grow up in a warm nest like that, and it was always laughing, my dad and I and my brother used to watch uh, stuff like Monty Python and uh, Faulty Towers together. We would we'd be rolling on the floor together, you know. My sister and my mom would sit there, what, what's so funny about this? Well, <laughs> that, that, some things haven't changed. <laughs> that was funny, that, that was funny enough still. in itself. That was funny enough in itself, you know, because they were sitting there, what's so funny? Guys. And that made me laugh again, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, that's how I am, and that's how I wrote. And that, 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 that um, in retrospect, that was pro probably one of the important elements that set Vandenberg apart from uh, most other bands in um, that came out of you know LA and in those days came out of everywhere. But um, it was a positive kind of um, uh, rock, basically, and and still heavy and still um, you know musically uh, challenging. So where about are you touring and who you're touring with Jeff Tate, I heard. Sorry? Are you touring with Jeff Tate? Is it, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so uh, I think it's a great combination. Um uh, as we all know, you know, it's it's a, a different kind of rock and at the same time it really overlaps. So it's not like people are hearing uh, two very similar bands uh co headlining, you know. Yeah. I like we're that. different and, and we really uh, complement each other, I think, as far as um you know, our genres. So it's great. They're great people, you know, having a great time. Um, sound checks, no problem. You know, everybody's accommodating for each other, you know. It's fantastic. And the, and the crowd loves it. So I, I, I could see I could see you and Jeff doing something together, like, you know, musically. I don't know. I, I think it would be a good combination. With your yeah, style, you never know. You know? Yeah, you never know. It's, um, uh, things happen uh, for for a reason, you know. That's, I've always believed in that, you know. And if they happen, it's... It's great. It's a cosmic. If the cosmos wants it to happen, it'll happen. Yes. Yeah. Well, the cosmos, the cosmos wanted, wanted to uh, to uh, to, uh, uh, to let me check out uh, the burger from uh, Five Guys. Oh, yeah, there you go. And they got they a lot of those in Europe too, though. Yeah, I've seen a, a few of them in Europe. I've never tried them, and a couple of days ago I did. Really <laughs> great. And this, <laughs> it's not an advertisement, you know. I'm not endorsed by this guy. I wish, but uh, I'm not. So. Um, but that was uh, one of those cool American things, you know. You, you, you park the tour bus somewhere, and and there's always like interesting, typically American food, you know. And I'm a foodie big time, but I do, I am very consciously into uh, uh, staying healthy, getting a shitload of vitamins and stuff. But those burgers are great. <laughs> oh, they are, they are, they are. So and the fries. Yeah, I mean, any plans? Okay, so you wrote an album. Now it's been a while. Has it been a while, Sin? How long has it been? It's not that long ago. Six or five months. months. It's, Sin is a couple of months, I think, yeah. inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there what are you what are you, what are you planning on doing musically in the future after the tour? Is there any other plans that you have going on? 
Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of. Um, I'm gonna do tour two more tours in Holland. One um, uh, with with uh, most of the um, the classic Vandenberg material, mm-hmm. and later in the year I'm gonna do the same thing as uh, what what I'm doing right now is um, uh, let set the balance to um, predominantly white snake stuff for my white snake years. Uh, there's a lot of interest uh, for that because, as we know, white snake is not touring anymore and. Um, in Holland, White Snake was really big when I was in the band. <laughs> uh, there was a, a part of uh, patriotism uh, involved, which is which is always good, you know, in a positive way. We did one stadium show in Holland, which was fantastic. It was one of the best memories I've ever had. Both my parents were still alive. They were there, my brother, my sister, all my friends. We had like a whole area with just, uh, you know, people that were close to me. And it was a beautiful summer night. It was a slip of tongue tour. And um, it was uh, it was wonderful. Uh, actually, the funny thing is, my tour manager, Ralph, he was in the crowd. He was standing. <laughs> he told me I didn't even know. You know, he mm. was he was uh, in his twenties at the time. You know, and uh, and he was there. You know, and a lot of other people I talked to over the years. Actually, the singer for my Moon Kings band, mm. he uh, he he drove there on his on, on his on his bike, uh, and and was at the show as well. So. Um, and he he become a, he has become a great friend. We did great stuff with Moon Kings, but we couldn't get out of the country because Jan, the singer, he has two huge farming companies, and he he's used to keeping an eye on it, you know. So um, um, he couldn't leave the country, and I really missed international touring, especially you know the United States, Japan, the rest of Europe, you know. So that's actually why I put um, Moon Kings in the in the in the fridge, so to speak. <laughs> No, you never know. We go. Maybe I'll, I'll pick it up at some point, and when Jan uh, sold his farm or something, <laughs> we'll see. So who's, who's in the band on this tour with you? Um, I got an um, amazing light uh, lineup. Um, the singer is Mats Leven. He's from Sweden, yeah. and uh, he sings the Weissnick material. Amazing. A lot of people thought it was David, but he's got <laughs> his, his own twist to it. He does not imitate David, but he's got the same timbre. So he really does justice to the stuff, you know, check it out on YouTube and you go, oops. Uh, and at the same time, he, he does his own version of, of classic Vandenberg stuff, like um, uh, like Burning Heart, and like uh, You Love Us in Vain, you know. He really made it, makes it his own. Um, so he's he's like fantastic. And then I have an amazing young drummer, uh, Joey uh, Joey De Boer. He's, he's like a young Tommy Aldridge. He's really amazing. I mean, oh. I was stunned. And Tommy is his biggest hero. So um, he grew <laughs> up on top. His dad and his, and, and his father are huge White Snake fans. So ever since his, he was eight, they played it uh, all the time for Joey. They took him to two White Snake concerts when I was involved. Um, and now he finds himself in his band. For him, it's a dream come true. And for me, it's a dream come come true to play with the, like a version of Tommy Aldridge again. So yeah. that. Bass player is Randy Van Els, and he's really, really good too. He skips a generation in musical influences because he's 30 years old, but he grew up on Led Zeppelin and Rainbow and Deep Purple and all the stuff. And um, this time I brought a keyboard player, Len van der Laak, and, and he, same thing, you know, his heroes are guys like Don Airy and John Lord, you know, those kind of stuff. So, a great line. I'm really, really happy with him. Yeah, yeah, it sounds amazing. Are you going to planning to record some of the music on, on live? You know, sort of for a live record, perhaps, or maybe do a DVD I, or or a documentary of anything that you're doing. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's interesting you mention it. I'm really thinking about uh, doing some live stuff. You know, recording um, uh, some tracks live and put them out. You know, it's um, it's gonna be cool. No, okay, all right. We got the you know, I got Starkers in Tokyo. I mean, are you doing any of that? Any acoustic with just you and the singer on this tour? Or? Yeah, on the tour, uh, the singer and me are doing um, um, a shorter version of Sailing Ships Acoustic. Okay, yeah. acoustic, and it comes out great because you you have you bring the whole tension down and you build it up from there again. And then after that, there's a bunch of big blockbusters that uh, <clears throat> we have the shows that we've been doing. Uh, uh, it, it really gives me goosebumps because I haven't experienced before playing in, in big theaters where people are sitting down. You know, and I've never played anywhere where people are sitting down. <laughs> you know, these are these are big theaters, and people are sitting down. And the last couple of songs, slowly but surely, they stand up and they go wild. And and the, I, I I get goosebumps on my arms every night. I go, holy shit! You know, this is 
this is amazing. It, it's it's really emotional for me, you know, because uh, that's what you try to do with music. You try to convey an emotion, and if people feel that emotion and they react to that that way, that that's for me. There's no money um, that can, uh, you know, buy that emotion for me. That, that's that's what I do it for. I could sit on my ass if I wanted. Uh, but but um, they're, they're gonna have to drag me off stage kicking and screaming, you know, when I like it when I'm grown. And, you, and you know, for, for just for the other guys that are you know that are might thinking about doing the same that that's your age. That how has the turnout been? Has it been a good uh, good fan participation, good attendance on this tour? I'm sorry. Uh, has it been a good attendance? The, there's been a, a oh, lot yeah. Of coming up. Yeah, good. Yeah, and yeah. The first couple couple of shows was was a little bit up and down, and it, it started to get stronger when people realized we were actually touring. You know. <laughs> yeah. And it's not like the early days when we were all uh, keeping an eye on on in the in the big uh, rock magazines and stuff like Circus and Metal Eyes and all the stuff. Yeah. You know, these people all have jobs and are in the hall now, and then. Um, they like, like all of us basically well this has become my job but um, it doesn't feel like one <laughs> so it's, it's um a lot of people uh reacted on my social media um my my facebook and um, instagram pages it's the, oh man i wish i would have known you guys were in my town i go man you know so it's a different kind of uh, time so it it varies a, a bit but it, um my uh american touring agent reliant agents uh reliant talent they're from nashville um my agent was uh, at the, the other show the show uh, the day before yesterday mm-hmm. and he, he he literally said i'm blown away i didn't expect any of this and the crowd was going okay. bad so he said man i'm immediately gonna get to work and 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 um put a, a second leg of this tour together so we're gonna be back uh sooner than than, than you would like <laughs> so, so you're saying you're coming back to the United States, but just oh, yeah. in different different cities, yeah. right? Oh, this this is like a test run. Well, yeah, it 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 it, it, it looks like it was a test run uh, for um, my touring agent, which makes sense. He was um, he's also the touring agent for Whitesnake and for people like John Wade, BB King, you name him. You know, he's he's done really big big acts, and and he was curious how it would go down, and, and he was there at the show, and he said, "Man." I, I couldn't have wished for a, for a better response on this, and he was blown away, you know. So that's literally what he said, and he was um, the beer. The, the beers uh, were going down like uh, like water uh, that evening. <laughs> I mean, when you look back, okay, you come out with your first Vandenberg debut album, right? Yeah. Um, did you think you'd be here today, still doing no. music? <laughs> or, or, no. you're, you're, no. you're recording, you know, your first album. The feeling of recording your first album, what was that like? And did you think 40 years later, you're still doing the yeah, same thing? Yeah, I would never have thought. I, I really, I mean, uh, I always thought even also in the White Snake days when we were number one, you know, biggest band in, in the States or in the world or whatever. Um, every day in the morning, I woke up, I thought, man, if it's over tomorrow, nobody's going to take those memories away from me. And I'll go back to painting, which I love yeah. doing. Uh, I'm a lucky bastard, uh, as I mentioned before. And I realize it, so I don't take anything for granted. And the first album, you know, we recorded in, in Jimmy Page's studio. And um, I met Jimmy Page for the first time. And a bunch of times afterward, I I, I went out in, into Tokyo one night, you know, which was an unforgettable night. And um, it was one of the biggest hangovers I had in my life. <laughs> yeah. What was he like as a person? Like, was he everything everybody thinks he is, or is he different? Uh, he's he's a, he's a great guy. He's very intelligent. British sense of humor. We all know him. He's an incredible talent, and um, it was just a, a pleasure and an honor to to meet him in the first place. And at the same time, I would never have expected, you know, it would be like a guys among uh, among each other uh, situation. That's the kind of guy he is, you know. Wow. I still listen to Led Zeppelin like the rest of the world with a little bit of musical taste, you know. Yeah. It's it's timeless stuff. It's it's like, you know, what Mozart and Bach and Beethoven are for classical music. Zeppelin is for rock, as we all know, you know. And, you know, I have to give a shout out to my friend Cork. I mean, he bought that first, uh, I guess it's over here, the first Vandenberg album just because of that design on the album cover. Oh, cool. <laughs> because of that logo. No. And then we all started listening to it. I mean, I got that. I actually got it twice on vinyl. I love it so much. In case I wore the grooves out the first time, I got a backup copy. So, Oh, man, it's so good to hear that. Um, 
I designed that logo when I, when I um, just stopped the teaching art and uh, uh, turned to be a graphic designer. And I, I, I designed it secretly uh, in the studio that I was working as a graphic designer because I had, you know, the time in between and stuff. And people th people think it's airbrushed, but I did it with with um, with crayon. With um, oh wow! Um, well, it worked. It worked. Well, to me, it was the shark. To me, it was the shark. Yeah, <laughs> well, I brought the shark. It'll always be about the sharks. It'll right. Be about the shark. the well, shark I should, I should, just in midair, kind of like down the yeah. Road. I, that's why I brought him back on the Sin album, you know. I thought it would be cool um, because everybody was wondering, where are those, those sharks? sharks? Yeah, well, they I let them fly straight into New York. Uh, New York, the apple. So, And then the connection with the snake and the apple, Sin. So that, for me, that was like the, the brain. Yeah. I, I, brain I like album. that album cover too. That's a great album cover. The green it, shark. Oh, yes, the apple, yeah. The the last time we interviewed you, I said I was going to ask you if we had a chance to interview again about Manic Eden. I got the CD behind me over here. Was that, was that, I always thought that was, while well, David went off with Paige and did his little cover there, Paige, the rest of the White State guys, you, Rudy, and Tommy did that album. Is that how it worked it, out? It worked out great. It is one of the favorite albums I've ever done. And it's actually getting re-released this month by, oh, wow. uh, by Muscat Records. Um, yeah, it, it, it was great. We recorded it all style in two weeks. It was all done pretty much live. Um, I think it's a great album. I still play it for my personal um, entertainment, especially in the car. Uh, you're sitting right in the middle of the recording session, you know. This, we, we went all the way back to like a 70s vibe, uh, not polished like in the, in the 80s because it was in the middle of the grunge period, you know. So we thought we're going to do something we love, you know, and that's what we did. And Ron Young, I just love him and his little yeah, Caesar he's everything he's done. Well, we'll talk a bit about him on that album. His voice, I just, I just always thought he was a great singer. So. He's a great singer, and he's, he's, uh, as you know, you know, he's, you, you, you can pick his voice out of a million other voices. He's very, very uh, characteristic, and it worked out perfect for the record. You know, very bluesy. Yeah. Uh, the, the only record I've ever done where I only used the Strat. Um, and uh, whenever I play a threat, it, um, it it wakes up the Hendrix and Steve Ray Vaughan vibe in me. <laughs> so um, I let it go. I went with the flow. I thought, fuck it, you know. It's completely different. I agree. It's just a bit different than anything you've done. I think so. Yeah, it is. Uh, at the same time, it's very connected to my very very first album, the teaser album from ninety. I recorded it in seventy six, so I was uh, three years old when I recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> But it's very, it's very connected to that, and also to Moon Kings. It's um, there's more connections than you would think uh, at first. But um, yeah, this, uh, actually, we played a couple of the songs with Moon Kings when we when we started out. So, oh, who well. knows? Who knows what may happen in the future? You know, like James Bond saying, "Never, uh, say never, never, never say die." Yeah, is it? Or is did, that Dodgy Osborne? <laughs> for that, I don't remember. Did you do the Manic Eden and Elm cover? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. My style had changed um, in the period I toured with Whitesnake um, because I used to not to appreciate this kind of style when I was in art college. I never would have thought that after eight, nine years and not having the time to paint and I saw a blank canvas in front of me, I thought I'm going to attack it and see what happens. So yeah, my style changed and, and the Sin album cover was actually going back to that time. Uh, I thought, hmm, I'm curious if I can still do that, you know, uh, because I, I <laughs> had nothing in what 35 years or something uh so it could very well be you know that next time i have time to paint again and it's gonna go like somewhere in between those two styles the guy thank you very much adrian uh, hey thank you always a pleasure thank you so much right, best guys guys so much. good luck on the tour don't hesitate to come down whenever we're in, in your city and um and don't bring don't bring your earplugs <laughs> all, right. all right have a nice day thank you so much